If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. When we first started the podcast, we had a few goals and targets in mind, one of which was to give fitness professionals information that would help them build uh, their business or help build their reach. And one of the things that we identified early on was how big of a role social media and like Instagram and Facebook and podcasting and YouTube, how big of a role those play now in building a fitness business. I mean, when, when we managed gyms, it did, what didn't exist. It didn't matter, right? Right, right. It was all about the brick and mortar. So we, you know, we're trying to bring guests on the show uh, that can provide information to help uh, some of you guys build, some of you guys and girls build. Well, I've been, I've been, business. I've been pushing for guests like this for quite some time, mm-hmm. you know. So, uh, and I definitely think that uh, because I was out of all of us, probably doing the Instagram social media thing, and you're on there first, yeah, and really diving into a lot of these these guys and girls that you know had millions of followers on YouTube and and Instagram and Facebook. And real easily can people get turned off because they they don't their message doesn't align with them or oh they say this and I disagree with that and I'm like that to me that's such a small small minded way of thinking is to to shun somebody or or not pay attention to what they're doing uh, because your values don't exactly align with them or they're different than what you are or maybe they're presenting and, fitness information and, you don't agree with well and I'm the opposite like I'm attracted to that like I I'm curious. Like, I don't want to just talk to people that are just like me or did it just like how I did it. I want to talk to people that have done it completely different or maybe do it a way that I totally would not recommend doing it for somebody else. But there's something to learn. Yeah, absolutely. If if you've got millions of subscribers on YouTube or followers on Instagram or whatever, there's something there that is working to get that. Now, whether you agree or not with that method, it's important to learn about it. And this is something that I learned as we've been doing this podcast later on was – like pick, you can learn from that and use it in your own way um, to help build your business. And so we've been trying to reach out to more people who seem to have a massive audience. And uh, the two people that we have on this podcast uh, uh, that you're about to listen to, Brandon Carter and Connor Murphy, together have millions of subscribers and followers to their social media and especially on YouTube. Like their po- their YouTube channel is extremely popular. And so we wanted to have well, you have, you have you have you have Brandon Carter who has built his his social media empire uh, through radical radical honesty, you know, and that's one of the things that I I do respect by the guy is, you know, if you watch some of his stuff, you know, he doesn't try and claim that he knows everything. He speaks to you from what what he's learning currently right now, and and I think that there's something to take away from that because we, we do live in this world of so much bullshit and and to have have a guy who's just like, you know what, I'm going to put myself out there. I don't really give a fuck what people think about me and, and see where it goes. And I think that he's a great example of that. And then you see Connor, who's like, what is he, 20? Is he, I mean, he's yeah, a fucking young He's young. He's, he's I know he's in buck. his early 20s, yeah. Early. Or, yeah, he's, he's 20, 21 years old. And his, his, his page, his YouTube channel is, he's got a couple YouTube channels, but the one that got real popular was him doing these funny skits where he'd go up to girls, take his shirt, you know, shirt off and say whatever he wanted to. And the funny thing is he has all these young guys that are looking up to him because they're like, oh man, you really helped me build my confidence, you know, doing some of that stuff. But the entertainment factor, the way they edit their videos, like how they, how they're able to get their videos to oh, rank there, higher. It's very There's well, some interesting information. It's very well thought out. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you get a chance to talk to these guys and, or hear this episode and they share uh, quite a bit of that in there on how, and they, they go around now and, and help others do that. You know, it's very methodical. You know, sometimes when we watch people on YouTube or social media, we're just like, oh, they're these, I can't believe these idiots are so popular and so huge. All they do is silly stuff. Or, But it's like, no, you know, I think when you get to the level where they're at, where they're reaching millions of people, uh, I think it's naive to think that it's just dumb luck that somebody got there. These guys know what the fuck they're doing, and they're, they're feeding and playing right into it. And then you as a consumer need to know that. Yeah, for sure. So if you're in fitness and you want to build a business, uh, you should listen to this episode. Take that information and utilize it for yourself however you like. But it's important information because, again, the, the really to build a business now and moving forward, 
you'll need to know some of this information in order to do so. So Brandon Carter, he's on YouTube and Facebook. On Instagram, he's known as King Keto. And on Twitter, he's B, he's B Carter Music. And his website is brandoncarter.com. Then you have Cart, uh, Connor Murphy. He hosts the podcast, The Adonix Podcast. Um, he's also on YouTube and Facebook. We have an episode on there, right, where they, they, they interview us on his yeah. podcast. Um, uh, Connor Murphy Official on Instagram. And uh, what is that? C. Murphy Fitness on Twitter. So uh, without any further ado, here we are interviewing the social media celebrities, Brandon Carter and Connor Murphy. How did you guys meet? Tinder. No, uh, that's, how we, that's, that's how we met. That's how we met. time. Oh, grind, <laughs> grinder. I should have known. Way I'll, more serious. Yeah, I was in there, you know, I use it for business, basically. You know, <laughs> <laughs> find your best partners. You know? yeah. I just need a guy who can, like, a strong guy who can, like, just help me. No, no, no. What happened was, man, you know, uh, Connor's demographic is, like, young young guys, right? Like, young mm-hmm. guys, right? And I'm the outside of that demographic. I'm old, man. I'm old. And... My employees, though, they're, they're young, they're young, young folks, they're children, <laughs> just children, and and they were big fans of his, and they like they kind of put me on. They're like, yo, this kid, man, he's growing. His YouTube is, is getting crazy. It was, it was it was my uh, it was my my COO Trillstein over there. Um, yeah, he's like twenty two or some shit, and and he he said, yo, this is kid, he's growing, and he like, oh wow, this is crazy. He was showing me the videos, like, yo, this is. This is interesting content, you know. This is interesting content, and he reached out to him, and we just said, "Hey, man, let's go to let's go to Austin and film some stuff, man." Um, but then I, I we got along. How long ago was this? This is how many years ago? I think this was around like March or April mm. this year, right? Oh, this is just that recent. You guys are yeah, recently man. just linked yeah. up like that. Oh yeah, shit! I didn't now, know where, where was he at uh, views wise? Yeah, where were you guys connected? Where were you at before and now? Mm. So I think. I, I, it was way less than it was now, man. Yeah. I think I was around like uh, Trillstein probably knows probably like four hundred or five hundred thousand subs on YouTube. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And I, now I'm around like one point three million on my main. Jesus. Wow, that's yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> I doubled it. Let yeah. me double this. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me ask you yeah. this, Connor. Let me let, let me ask you this. So when yeah. you when you first turned your Instagram on, was it with the intent to build it like that, or were you just kind of fucking around? Absolutely. I think uh, that was his face. That's his uh, YouTube. That's that with those numbers. Yeah, well, yeah. Instagram, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's why you do. But I actually did start with Instagram. Okay. But it, it didn't take off. I got my popularity from YouTube. But yeah, man, a lot of people, they go into this saying, oh, it's just a hobby, you know, and then it blew up. I didn't think it like that at all. All right. I was a junior in college and I was trying to avoid, you know, a, a boring nine to five desk job. You know, I was majoring in computational math and economics and that was the direction what, I was going. What first motivated you to even think to go that direction? Mm. It to go the direction of like trying to build a business on that because there there was a moment for me when I like I I wasn't even on any of that shit like so right. I'm 36 I'm an older cat so mm. you know I didn't I I just met, Facebook came along I was already too busy for Facebook and I turned it on just to have kept connect to my family but I never gave a shit about it mm. and I heard about people making money off of Facebook and and, and well, before Instagram right. And Twitter and stuff like that. I'm like, get. I haven't. I haven't met anybody personally. So at that time, I'm kind of like, ah, whatever, bullshit. And Taylor, who you guys, who you guys met, who works with us now, he was actually this young 22 year old kid mm. who was making money on Facebook. He was making really good money. And I was like, first person I ever met. And I was blown away. And I, that's what motivated me to turn mine on with the same intent. So I was wondering, what mm. was it? Was there a moment for you? So I don't know if there's one moment. It was like the closer and closer I got to having to like start applying for normal jobs, the more I realized like, <laughs> damn, I really don't want to do that. I think if there was any moment, man, I was I was working uh, in an internship. That was just a thing that, you know, juniors in college did, man. My parents were like, yo, you got to get an internship. It'll help you, you know, work experience. It'll help you get a better job. And it was the most awful experience like I've ever experienced. It was so boring. I, I can't even, it was so boring. I don't even remember like what the company did. It was, we were doing such like <laughs> meaningless work and I ended up getting fired from that job. Why'd you get fired? Again? You got fired. Hey, wait, wait, wait. What'd you, what'd you, you, yeah. you was this, Why'd you get fired? Man, I don't know if I want to say exactly why I got fired, <laughs> but I can tell you that, um, my project manager got fired the exact same day and she was very devastated, but I was, I was kind of happy that I got fired. But we both got fired the same day. You guys can speculate all you want. But <laughs> at that moment, I realized, man, like, I, 
working for someone has like limitations. Yeah, man, Connor wanted an environment where he could fuck his coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> like, where is that? I'm you too. I'm glad yeah. you guys had the relationship to say yeah. that because that's what's on my mind, and that's what I was yeah. gonna say to you. But I'm like, we're we're oh, early, man. we're early into this he right started, now. Nah, man, he wanted to fuck his coworkers. That's why he started this whole thing. That, that's pretty much it. Man. Yeah, <laughs> wow. exactly. So ambitious. Yeah. But yeah. man, I mean, it's basically I just wanted. to I wanted the freedom. I wanted to do something I was passionate about, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of why why anyone wants to start their own business, you know? Now, d- did you know how wh- what the reality was at that time? Because I'll tell you right now, I think there's a huge facade out there on how much money there really is. I know a ton of guys that have 100,000 followers and they don't make hardly any, they don't make anything. So a lot of people mm-hmm. think that, oh, once you get to a million or once you, that the work is over and you're just rich. Right. Like, did you kind of think that way or did you have a better no, perspective? I, I was pretty rational about it. I had a pretty good perspective. I knew uh, at the start, I was just focusing on AdSense, right? I actually um, I actually started getting like a lot of views on YouTube. Like it was kind of abnormal for like fitness YouTubers. And I was actually making- He was doing you know, all right, man. Yeah, I was making- He was doing, I mean, all, I, he was doing all right all the ads. Like it's not yeah, typical. Like, it's not a something you should plan for. Like, like you're right, but he was- I mean, I was making five figures a month just from ads, right? Yeah. And so that that was kind of my goal. And I realized I wanted to turn it into a business later. I, I knew it was out there. I knew if you if you get popular in the fitness industry, you can, you know, you're gonna want to sell programs or supplements or, or clothing or something. And I was planning to do that, but starting out, I really uh I really just wanted to get popular and yeah. started making some sort of ad sense and it blew up way faster than I thought. And like in a matter of months, I was like, wow, like I was I was making decent money off of just that. Sense. Did you put together like the formula of what was working for you? Like, where, like, oh, this when I do this type of shit, people eat it up, and oh, people don't really care about yeah, this. Yeah, right yeah, right sure. away, right away, or how long did it take? Yeah, you? No, before I even started, it was well thought out before I even started. Oh, All right, really? I, I looked. Um, a good tip I have for anyone who's trying to start out and, and make content is see what's working, and then see if you can, you know, Copy, adapt it. Still, not exactly. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but try try and make it unique to you. Try and put a little of yourself in it and try and improve on it a little bit. So mm. I I saw uh, there were a couple guys that do – they were doing things similar to what I do now, just not to the same extent and not enough. Like, like for some reason, people love that content, but they only put out like a few videos of that type of content. And I was like, wow, I can put this content out there and people are going to love it because there's not a lot of it out there. And I can improve on it a little bit and people are going to love it even more. So I knew I was 100% positive that this content was going to work, right? And I just had to, I just had to do it, you know? Now, what got you both into fitness? Why fitness? Well, for me, man, I used to get uh, beat up in, in high school. Uh, I got, I got, I'm from Southside Chicago and I got sent to a military school because uh, I got in some trouble in Chicago. And uh, I went, I was there on some sort of like, affirmative action scholarship thing and I was like the, one of the only black kids there and you know I came with his own unique set of challenges and I ended up getting a lot of fights uh and I don't think I'm not, I'm not I don't think the kids were racist I think kids are just assholes you know mm-hmm. and um <laughs> yeah they're just jerks, <laughs> you know like and um I just wanted to fight better man I, I started working out for violence violent purposes you know to improve on my um yeah to get better at fighting and I don't know. I, it's, it just changed who I was, and then I started to just love it. You know, it was before it was YouTube. Like I'm, I'm, I'm around the same age as you. I'm 35, so like back in our day, there was no like YouTube. You had to like read books and stuff, which is probably better, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, there was a dude named Bill Phillips who I looked up to. Oh uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, like a, like a lot. He was like my guy and. And I just followed everything he did. And oh, what a great person to he, follow yeah, in fitness yeah, yeah. and business, man. One of the sure. smartest businessmen ever. He's, he's sure. the, he created the mod, modern supplement industry. Yeah, yeah, do you yeah, know that EAS? Yeah, do you yeah. know that EAS still just kills everybody? And we don't even see them. You don't yeah, even see them on Instagram. Yeah. You don't see them anywhere. But they dominate everywhere. They sold to Ab- Laboratories, I believe. He sold it for $150 million, yeah. um back in like early 2000s or the 90s <laughs> or something like that, man. And um, yeah, man, he crushed it, man. Yeah. They crushed it. Yeah. So that got you into fitness, and yeah. then what got you into fitness media? Ah, uh, all right. So, oh, okay, man. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just a story. All right. So anyway, I, you know, I went to college. You know, I was a trainer there, and it, it was cool. You know, whatever college school, and uh, I got out, and you know, I actually got out of college. I I, I got signed to Sony Records as a musician, as a rapper. I played drums, keyboard, and a production. And uh, that's what, looking at your studio, like, 
you know, like I appreciate what you guys got going on here, you know. Um, and I and then I got dropped from the label when they merged with BMG. So now I'm in Manhattan because I moved to Manhattan and or, or New York, and I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm broke. I don't have nothing going on. Um, and so then I just I started selling uh, selling drugs. Yeah, I became a drug dealer. Wow. I was going back and forth from. Um, How old are you at this time? I'm like in my early twenties. Like, early twenties. Yeah, and because uh, I, I was just looking for, I was trying to make some money, man. And then and then uh, like some serious money. And then my father, uh, when I started, but so then my father, uh, he actually committed suicide. He was in some other stiff too. So you and I got a lot of stuff in common. Yeah, my yeah. dad, my dad took his life when I was seven. Oh man, and I grew up in a very rough childhood. It was it was a, an abusive home, all kinds mm. of shit. So I had all kinds of similar, similar background. Yeah. Do you attribute a lot of that to who you are today? Oh, for sure, like for sure. You know, because like because after that happened, I felt like, yo, man, I gotta now I gotta like take care of the family, man. Like it was like a different kind of pressure, you know. Like, um, you have siblings? Yeah, yeah I have I, I have an older brother, but. And and I but he's half brother right and I have a a sister right who's still kind of like dependent on my dad or whatever and she had a son and I was like oh shit so you I felt responsible like, yeah yeah I felt like I was the guy you know because my brother wasn't really in there with life and I felt like I was the guy and and then at the same time one of my other friends got who's doing the same stuff as me he got sent to prison uh, for murder and another friend of mine was killed so I was like all right let me stop this bullshit you know what music ain't working crime's gonna send me down this path obviously. The only other thing I was really like good at and passionate was like training people, uh, but that wasn't bringing in like you know bringing in personal training doesn't bring in that kind of money, right? So I had got other jobs. I was working at my boys' moving company, and I was working at managing my other boys' restaurant and training people. It was like, and then I had an idea. To, I read a book called oh, The Four Hour Work Week. You know, I met <laughs> Tim. I met, yeah, I met Tim recently. Man, he's a cool guy. Oh, oh that been, yeah. that had been a great moment for you. Yeah, no, it was a big deal for. It was like a fucking big deal. I, was trying I to bet be it cool. was a big deal. It was a big deal. But like, <laughs> well, a, think about that. That's life that's changing for you. Read yeah, that yeah. book, yeah. and it changes your life forever. Then you finally get a chance that you're at that kind of level where you probably get that. You get the time of Tim Ferriss. That's yeah, pretty no, fucking no, cool. It was. It, yeah. was, it was a moment, man. It was. A, it was a big moment for me. And but I read the book, and I was like, man, I could do this shit. And then so I, I was, I had an idea for a supplement. Because I was taking a supplement from GNC. I don't, I don't want to say because I want to shit on the company. Uh, but it was it was like fucking up my blood pressure. Like my blood pressure was crazy. It was a fat burner. And I thought, man, there's got to be like a natural alternative or, or, or alternative with more than something that won't. That sounded like hydroxy cut or, or one of those. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you like, like off the camera, I just don't want to shit on them publicly because they're not bad guys. We took them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it was intense. I'll put it like that, you know. And, and, and I came up with the formula and I found a way to get it manufactured. And then I, I had that develop. I, I, I hustled up, you know, uh, you know, thousands of dollars to get this. All. And I was like, man, I ain't got no Hold way. on. You you came up with a supplement company before you had anything on YouTube? Or I know. That's yeah, right. I know. Yeah, man. Started that's, there. That's crazy. That's, that's, backward. that's backwards. And, <laughs> that's and, right, and yeah. when I mean say that backwards, I mean, because you've obviously done well. Yeah, but yeah. Usually it's the other way around. Like, get the... Get the audience and then release a supplement. You you're your own retarded. sponsored athlete, right? I think, yeah, man. Yeah, I was. I think that's smarter, right? Because well, obviously it worked. Yeah, for you. yeah, no, because it's like I okay. So I needed a way to to, to market this, and I was like, fuck it, man. Maybe I'll I got I maybe I'll start a YouTube page, and I I, I bought a uh, flip cam. Remember, flip God damn, you got cam. one of those stories that like <laughs> yeah, I bought a very rare story, dude. I bought, very, I bought <laughs> this shit off you eBay, man, because uh, uh, I had enough money to get get it, you know, new, and I bought the the flip cam. The bullshit flip cam started making videos and uh it, you know long story short you know now we got um fast forward a few years you know uh, 100 million youtube views 1.6 million facebook fans uh you know seven figure uh supplement and fitness company you know 10 employees customers all around the world you know and um what do you think yeah. what is it that that's drawn that, do you share your story like do you share yeah. do you share all this mm -hmm. so do you think that's a, a lot of the reason why people are attracted so, to man. you i think so because a lot of people have a lot of stuff going on you know and and it's it's uh especially like people who come from where i got where i'm from when i go back to, to chicago on the south side like those kids don't think they're they're gonna grow up and be like hedge fund managers or or mm -hmm. you know like they, they don't see a lot of hope right you know so like I, I I try to I hope that my story is like oh man maybe I can do something uh, positive you know without being like a uh, a rapper or athlete you know or, or or criminal right I can do something to be successful 
I hope that, you know, like that's kind of in the back of my mind. You believe in fate? Huh? Do you believe in fate? Nah, I don't really believe in much. <laughs> <laughs> but when you've been through a lot, it's hard, dude. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't. The reason I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe I, I'm open to mm-hmm, it. If you mm-hmm. sound like you, you sound like you got something brewing in your no, brain. No, no. I'm just because oh. your stories just sound so incredible. Oh, well, thank you, man. Nah, I, I mean it wouldn't be so great if you knew how. Like I skipped a lot. If you knew how hard we we worked, man. Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't seem that <laughs> impressive. No, we'll get, no, actually, yeah. I think that's so. I'll t- I'll be very transparent with you guys. That you know, we when we get guests on the show, typically we do like a Rob Wolf, Chris Cressers, these guys that are like super like doctors about yeah. uh, about fitness and health. And lately, we've been doing a lot of people that are like fitness influencers, and everybody mm. was like, I, "I can't believe you guys are going to bring those guys. They believe in this or that." And it's like, listen, I, what I really, what I was really drawn to you guys, both of you guys, is you feel uh, real and honest. And I think that that's one of the messages that we push through Mind Pump is that this the transparency is the future. Mm. We're in an era right now where and there was it was so easy to to hide behind a company and and you can't do that anymore. Everybody has to like what you're seeing is the brands are kind of going away and it's now the people that represent the brand yeah. right and your influencers and so. I, I feel like you guys are both really, really real guys, and that's probably where your audience came from. Uh, w- w- did you have to go through really, any really real? Yeah. Well, have I mean, you? Yeah. Had, did you guys? I mean, did either one of you? You guys are fitness influencers, but yet, uh, how much education or experience did you have? And then I know you said you were a trainer a little bit. Oh, I mean, I've been a trainer for like seventeen years, right? Like, so that's something I like. I, you know, it's a, it's a big deal to me, right? Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I was like when you know when Connor was shitting in his pants i was training 10 people a day you know like <laughs> no but it's all good no no it's, it's uh yeah i mean I, I trained for so long you know and then in in education you know i was a certified trainer you know mm-hmm. for so long and and just but the most of the education came in the business realm like you know you know you got a business degree from howard university and plus i'm i spent like 50 grand more than 50 grand this year on just like other educated courses oh, wow, and stuff like that like yeah and and then what was really cool is man like what, what i'm into now man is like because when kind of said he wanted to come out courses and stuff when i met him i felt like he, he he didn't have that and i was like yo let's do it you know like because he was just doing, going off sponsorships yeah and like some other companies um you know you know I feel like they wasn't giving him what they he was worth, man. Like, like, and me being in his shoes, right? Being where he's, I, I, I had more subscribers than him at, at the time, right? So like, I, I been where he was at, yeah. And so like, I, I had empathy, right? And, and also like, I, I just, I just knew, you know, like that if he had his own shit, you know, it would do, it would, it would do really well. Yeah. And that's kind of what's been happening. Did you, did you do something else? Like, what did you do for business? You said personal training. I mean, yeah. have you ever built to build something as big as you've got built now? Yeah. Like, uh, what, did you ever do anything else close to that or? I mean, nothing close. You've been I mean, an entrepreneur like, forever. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, well, I mean, being a drug dealer, like it's, it's the same shit, right? Like you buy it for cheap, right? You buy it for cheap. Then you, you package it and then you distribute it. You know, like you just, you buy it wholesale, d- package it. It's no maybe different. you put some branding on it and then distribute it. We do the same shit. It's man. no Still different. Moving powder. They talk about this in Freakonomics how yeah. drug dealers are just excellent business people. It's the same shit. Yeah, if they it's just the supply same. it towards. And the margins are better. <laughs> <laughs> like the margin, the margins are actually better. You know, like like that's why like, and I'm not trying to glorify crime. If if anything, I'm trying to tell like people who like maybe pre pre uh you know predisposed to go in that route that like nah man this, you can you the same exact skill set can be applied to something positive it, it's true and the same numbers exist too that the yeah. the one because there's a lot of not very successful drug dealers too yeah right, exactly. right yeah, that are broke can, smoking yeah, their shit all sure, the time right sure, and then there's ones that are really successful and the most of the ones that are really successful even do me that's not me. Is it? <laughs> no, you're right. Oh. You're right. Huh? Even someone who's really successful like that, I mean, they normally transfer over. It's the it's the skill yeah. sets. When, now, did you connect that right away? Did you, or was it later? You being older, mature, and looking back, like, did you just blindly kind of transition, or would you like, oh, okay, I'm gonna apply this these skills to this? Oh yeah, I never want. I didn't want to. Re- I didn't want to like do this, do, sell drugs. I was seventy, right? It was just <laughs> I was just trying to get. I was just trying to get it in. You know, like I was, you know, young kids, you do stupid stuff. You know, you take maybe risks that you shouldn't take. You know, um, uh, that's why I like I admire Connor, man, because he's like, <laughs> you wouldn't know from his videos, but in reality, he's like really mature and level-headed. Like, if I was as successful as he is now at his age, 
I would have definitely used that leverage to kill myself on accident and probably ruin the <laughs> lives of everyone around me. You know, like I yeah. wouldn't have been able to handle. I, there's no way I would have been able to handle that, that kind of fame and success at his age. It would have been some real like. like you see the other famous like Chris mm. Brown or like you oh, know yeah. people that's going haywire. That would have been. It can me. be a curse. Yeah, that would have been me for it sure. It can definitely be a curse. What's been the mm. most difficult uh, for you, Connor, for this whole process? What's been the hardest part? Absolutely, st- uh, starting out. Like, like no question. Like before, like doing all this before I actually got popular and had mm. a following. I went, I went to college uh, at a small university, like two thousand people, and I had like a spotlight on me. Like everyone knew what I was doing. I had a YouTube video get like. A few thousand views, and that was like yeah. world, like worldwide news to the to the college, right? I had them do; they did a newspaper article on me just because <laughs> I posted a YouTube video. Oh, wow. So everyone was watching me. And when you're posting douchey, shirtless Instagram <laughs> pictures, and they're getting like five likes, it looks kind of bad, man. Like, <laughs> like it just looks like like you're you're kind of a loser, and you're you, you know what I mean. Like people are making fun of me. People are like, wow, look at this douchebag. Like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, put, mm-hmm. just posting these shirtless pictures on Instagram, and that was tough, man. Especially because I went to a small school. Like everyone was making fun of me, man. I know, like, man, there was just one moment that really got to me. I was actually in a fraternity. And even though I was in a fraternity, I still had no friends, man. Like, they, mm. they were just... You paid were, for that fraternity, and you still didn't get friends out of it. Exactly, man. <laughs> like, they were just not my kind of people, man. They just uh, they had different hobbies than me, you know? I was... I don't know. I'm naturally an, an introvert. I don't make friends that easily, and I... Which I, I think but, is crazy when yeah. you... Because I guarantee anyone who's a fan of you and watches they your shit... They think you're an extrovert. They think you're probably the most outgoing personality right. they've ever met in their life, because that's what you right. actually look like when so, you... So you consider yourself an introvert? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's my, fascinating. So you turn it on for camera? Are you just like... Does it, give you, that? does it give you the ability to be someone else? And so, so you so feel comfortable? It's interesting, because... It's still me. It's just like Well, of course it's you. I've been <laughs> I've been I've been able to uh I, I've just been able to like break out of my shell, I guess. What um, is that, dude? You got to dive into that. That's like that's your secret sauce right there. Mm, right. That's so, that's got to be your thing that I mean cuz you, if you're not that character, but it is you, of course. Right. What is it? Is it the adrenaline that does it? Like is it do you feel like you're performing cuz you're looking at a camera? I so, hate it. It's the hardest thing right. in the world for me. Mm. I'm so terrible I think, at it. Yeah, man. I think I think I don't, I love most about me, like, you know, but there, if one thing, if there's one thing that I really disliked about me was my, like, introvertedness and, like, inability to, uh, or, or, like, nervousness when I, like, talk to people, um, like, socially, like, I just, I never had any friends, I was always... I had social anxiety, man. I was never very comfortable in the social scene. Fuck me. This must have been hard as fuck for you right here then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is all right. It's, it's better now, okay. obviously. Uh, but hey. back then, <laughs> I, I hated that about myself, man. I absolutely hated that about myself because I wanted to be able to interact with people. I wanted to be able to have fun like yeah. socially, and I didn't like that. So I really, really, really wanted to change it. And I think mm. that's what it was. So mm. once I started making YouTube videos, like, yeah, I wanted to build a business, but a huge benefit that I realized from the beginning is, wow, it's going to help me break out of my shell. Mm. And it's going to help me become more outgoing. And so it was it was difficult, but it was kind of fun. Like, you know, I would videotape myself on camera and I would watch it and I'd be like, wow. I, I thought that I was being energetic and it was the most monotone, like boring thing ever. And so I, I was like, not at all what I thought I was oh. like, mm. and the more I would practice and be on camera, the more I started to be more and more outgoing and what, you know, I started to kind of build the personality that I actually felt like I, I had on the inside, if, if, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, so it was really just that process of seeing myself on camera and kind of practicing. I mean, just like anything, man, it got better and better Reps. with practice, mm-hmm. but it was really, it was that desire to be able to able to be like socially successful because i'd been like a total nerd introvert like no friends my entire life what is that i was just going to ask you then uh because i'm how self-aware do you think you think you're a pretty self-aware guy because you sound like you're pretty self-aware talking about you know you're introverted and this yeah i believe so and a lot of people would <clears throat> would never realize that from from the videos because what i do on camera i i admit is absolutely ridiculous um but in, in a lot of ways, it, it well, it, it built a business off of it, and it actually yeah. motivates a lot of people. But yeah, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. Like people think, 
some people think that I, I take myself seriously on camera like I'm actually, you know, uh, I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that I'm fairly self-aware. Is, is it a character? Is it, is, or is it like a so, version? Of, I, I think it's a character, but it's like it's based off, it's based off of it's, parts of you, right? It's you know? weird, man, because it, it's not fake. It's not fake. Like, it's not fake, but the, the things I do in the video, I would never do in real life. You know you're, what I mean? you're doing it just for the video. Yeah, like yeah. my personality. Does it like, ever cross your mind though? Why not? Or maybe I should. Mm. Like, do it fake? Do no, it for no, no, real? No. no. Mm. What do you mean, do it for real? Like, like, like the camera. Because you're saying that that's not. Yeah, girls, like fucking yeah. really do that. Because I would expect, because I was going to take you to Vegas with me, and I'm like, I'm going to take this guy. Oh, and we're okay. going to go do this. Like, with him and I together, we're going to be able to pull some shit. Oh, but if we yeah. rolled out there and you looked at me like, nah, bro, I ain't doing that, I would be pissed at you. You got to have a cameraman. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't know, man. See, I guess this goes back to my like introverted personality like I uh like naturally I just wouldn't like just for nothing like like doing that kind of crazy stuff like around people I, I don't know I think so it was kind of the YouTube now don't get me wrong though it is fun in the moment but there's something about me that just wouldn't do it if it wasn't for the camera you know it, it, it gives you a reason or excuse right me. yeah the, the irony of it is do you think your audience, the people that the fans, do you think a large percentage of those fans are guys that were just like you? Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. We get I, I I we run his email stuff like so we see a lot of the response and like, yeah, a lot of those guys. Yeah. A lot of those guys, man. Guys who are afraid to talk to yeah. girls. Connor, Connor afraid do you, to, do you well, yeah. still struggle with that? Like well, your friends, like yeah, your man. relation do you still do you struggle with that now, like with your personal relationships? I mean, yeah, man, like it's always gonna be I'm always gonna be an, an introverted guy, man. But like I'm uh, I'm content with that. Like I don't. Some people they need that like social environment to just like 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 thrive. You know, I'm I'm cool with being alone. But I mean, it's much easier for me to make friends now, interact with people, and stuff like that. But um, I mean, you're talking to 10 million people like a day, so you're really not that alone. <laughs> you right. famous, man. <laughs> friends find you. Yeah, man. I don't know. But <laughs> do you find yourself in moments so still, you know, as as an adult and and blowing it up business wise, and then you get into outside, no cameras, uh, interactions with other friendships, relationships, real girlfriends. What is that like for you? Yeah, yeah, man. The 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 introvertedness will always will always be a part of me. Um, it's gotten a lot better, and I, I've grown a lot more confident. Right? Like, uh, I don't know. I I don't think you can really fake confidence. Like, confidence kind of kind of it comes from your actions, right? So what I've done has made me confident. Um, but but yeah, man, like I'll I'll still get a little nervous talking to girls and stuff like that. I mean, I, I don't think that can ever, You're human. ever really it's go away. Yeah, 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 man. Especially if you like them. Right. You know? <laughs> that's, so, right. that's when you fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> now that you see when you see when you're seeing these kids coming on, watching your videos, a lot of them themselves probably feel like they're not you know that they're maybe socially awkward or they're not they're introverted or they want to be more outgoing they watch your videos that motivates them does it make you feel like oh i'm doing something good now like i'm helping people absolutely i mean that's a huge reason why i started all this because yeah like like the money is is cool and stuff but it's fine i mean i could have made this much money going I, I was planning you know i had like a 4.0 gpa majoring in like computational math and economics i, I, I was on my way to getting a really lucrative job but boring though but yeah, yeah. <laughs> see this is the reason i wanted to develop a following is because i uh like i have influence over people i can actually change people's lives you know like uh i say Word. something it can actually affect you know a lot of people and i think that that's just so cool like it makes me feel like my life matters you, you know what i mean being able to uh, to affect all the all these people yeah now do you have a plan for the for how your channel is going to continue to evolve and grow or is it going to stay cuz at, at some point right you're going to look at it and be like okay where do I go from here mm -hmm. and I can even hear what you're talking about about helping other people you know become more more social is that a direction you're looking to go to to help people with that a little more specifically or that's interesting, man. I really haven't thought about that, like a kind of like a social like development mm. type of course. I haven't thought about that, but that's mm -hmm. that, that's a good idea too. Um, How to I stop being weird. Yeah, <laughs> kind of Murphy, the, the Murphy method. Yeah, yeah, stop I, being a fucking weirdo all the time. <laughs> so we, we started out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea, man. Hey, man, that's what I'm here for, man. <laughs> man we uh, we started out putting out like a fitness program, right? And now yeah. we're uh, 
we're doing some more sort of like coaching type stuff. And yeah, man, that might be a, a direction we go to. I like I, it, man. Personal development always works. You know? Yeah, for sure. We might do that too. Yeah, yeah. our friend over at uh, um, Art of Charm. I don't know if you. Oh, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, Jordan mm-hmm. came by our office in Madden. Yeah. Did he yeah. see? Yeah. It? Yeah. He seemed like a perfect fit for for Jordan and his crowd for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, because yeah, he does that. They have a course like that where they not specifically that, but they they kind of help guys develop their right. develop they themselves deal with social personal. awkwardness. Yeah. And, and they do yeah, very all well. That kind of stuff. They do very well. With Share that. a little bit about the process because I think a lot of people. Too too don't uh or misunderstand how you make money on youtube and how it still is a job it's not like you make one viral video you get rich and you're done one of the things that even i mean we put out a video every single day that i mean it's it's work to keep coming up with that content all the time and you guys know that not all of them go huge and some of them don't so what's that process like for each of you day to day like before i get into that before we even let's the stuff that i did to really blow my channel up it's not, it doesn't work as well now. Like the algorithm different. changed. Yeah, but. Oh, so here's shit, the, well, talk about that. Talk well, about that. Well, like it's different. Like when I first started, when I, when I, okay. So one of my mentors, before I knew him, he was my mentor, you know, but now we're like, like legit friends, uh, Elliot Host. Yeah. I know he's, mm-hmm. you guys went down there. And oh yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's my dog. And I, I saw what he was doing. And he was just, it looked like back in the day, he was just throwing videos. Out. I mean, lucky he had content, you know, but he was just throwing it. It looked like, it looked like it went straight from the SD card. <laughs> to, the, to the computer no editing you know he didn't care if he messed up one take and i was like yo that's how you do it that's how you do it. and and it was like it was um he was going for with right and i think that worked then you know i saw the hodge twins doing the thing man i mean them especially they it looked like they were doing it in a webcam i mean from their from their computer you know you could see him press off right or on right like <laughs> like okay it was just volume Mm-hmm. And, and I know they were successful and they all had over a thousand videos. So I was like, bam, I just, I just, I, I took that same method, man. And I started doing a video every day. And then at one point, then it was like one year for like half the year. I did two videos a day. I was just going for it, man, knocking them out. And really SEO, you know, mm-hmm. uh, studied SEO and I was getting, getting them ranked really well. And that's kind of what blew my channel up now. Then, but that, and, but now it's different. It's like, it, there's been a change and, and it, it kind of snuck up on me. Like the algorithm is like not the same as it was, and I talked to a lot of other like older YouTubers who had, who build big, and it is just not the same. Now Connor, on the other hand, he he came in on a new model and and figured it out, and actually to the point where he's the he's the best now. You know, like it he's the the best I've ever seen. Um, and people the people think you know, you would just get the impression that he's like a douchebag, but. But or like just a silly kid, right? Because but he is like I said, he had a four point oh, you know, in in math and economics. There's a lot of ways to measure smart, bro. There's a lot of ways to measure smart. He is a genius. I really think he's a genius. I'm not. That's not hyperbole. So he'd be better off to tell you what's working right now. So tell me, tell me what what you what you saw. What you see, and what did you do that was so different? Hmm. Well. So how did it, like how did I blow up on YouTube? Well, we got the old way where we're just pushing out volume, right. shitty, whatever, yeah. more content, two a day. That's the hustle to get the to get up there on the top of the algorithm, yeah. so you get put up there. Which those that are watching, that's the and most SEO important thing. I mean, once, stuff, yeah, yeah, you can make the coolest it. video in the world if you're not getting seen by fucking yeah. people. It ain't gonna get shared, right? Right. So good book for that's Hit Makers. I don't know if either one no, of you guys have read that book. It's a great that. book right there. But what did you see? That 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 the older wave of YouTubers that were bigger that what they were doing and then what you decided to do different. he passed us all like yeah, all man, of us. I, you know? I could probably man I could talk about this for like well go let's hours, go but you got somewhere to be or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, we came out just to just put yeah, I, our I just, minds pumped. Yeah, we just did a whole event on this man. But um, mm. so I th- I think the main difference, man, is like uh, so how most videos now that do well, right? They go somewhat viral. They reach a new audience, right? They get there through suggested videos. They don't yeah. get there through search. Or um, subscribers anymore. I don't even think subscribers is that important anymore. Right. It's not. So, so like, say I have a video that gets, like, 100,000 views the first day. Okay, like, that's... It mostly comes from the subscription feed. Mm. But if I have a video that goes viral, right, gets several million views over the first few days, right, it got those views because YouTube is suggesting this video to other viewers <clears throat> somehow. So you know when you get on YouTube, there's videos everywhere, man. There's video on the sides of, mm-hmm. of other videos. There's videos in your in your homepage, right? And YouTube is suggesting you videos based on a bunch of different stuff. So to the key is getting your video 
to rank high in the YouTube algorithm. So it gets suggested to a bunch of people. Um, and the algorithm is mostly based on like, uh, so the click through rate, right? So, so say a video pops up, right? How many people click on that and how many people just ignore it, right? How many people see it and click on it and how many people see it and ignore it and then watch time and audience retention, right? So watch time, right? The total time, um, the viewer watches the video and audience retention, the percentage of the video that what, have you found like sweet spots, like 12 to 15 minutes is like the sweet spot to be at time wise. Or do you, do you know that? So it depends. Cause I have two channels, right? I have a main channel where I do the, the douchey prank shirt off. Don't be stuff, ashamed man. of that, man. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Kind of no, don't get me wrong. Don't <laughs> I, do, get me wrong. I do. I do too, I bro. Shit, I, I, you guys wouldn't be here if we didn't like that <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah. Swear to God, we wouldn't have you down here if we didn't like that shit. There's a reason why you're here. I think it's fucking really smart. I think it's really clever. We can, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we can go into how like this Freddie from the business strategically how he just the way he markets himself why it was so successful when, when we turned into a business but I want to talk about YouTube first because yeah. there's, there's like something really important there that I've never seen done before that we did okay yeah. so so the YouTube algorithm a lot of people hate on it I maybe it's just because it's, it's helped it out, man. maybe it's just because it's helped me but I think it's it rewards good content man so in my main channel videos they're, uh, we make them around four minutes, um, cause that's what does well. But our vlogs, we make them longer, man, uh, between 10 and 20 minutes. And really, I think the key is if it's good content, like go ahead and make it longer, but don't try and make it a certain length mm. and just throw shit content in there because, cause if they drop off. It doesn't matter. Right. Cause remember the audience retention is, is, is up there too. Is really important. Yeah. Right. Um, so really what you can control is uh is trying to get like a good title and thumbnail right to get people to click on the video and there's mm -hmm. a lot that goes into that man in fact we we i think of titles and thumbnails before i ever shoot the video yeah he, um, he it's picks that the title and thumbnail before first he even right uh, makes oh wow the that's video. that's how important it is and then mm. so there's that and you want to try and somehow keep the viewer watching at all costs and there's a lot of different tips and tricks to that to get the audience retention as high as possible there's like a formula that um I like, actually like telling you yeah, to leave carrots graphic. later on. Like yeah. you get a you know, Easter eggs later on. Like if you, mm -hmm. in this video, make sure you guys, I'm going to show you this or tell you that. I, exactly. I yeah. mean, it's basically just leaving something at the end and maybe getting people excited for that piece of content like at the end somehow. Yeah. Right. And so it gets people watching till the end. And right. we, we do that a bunch of different ways. Uh, the thumbnail, whatever the thumbnail is, we want that scene like at the end because people click on it for the thumbnail, right? Watch, so you do like a screenshot really of it? Smart. You don't do like yeah. a like graphic design or anything? Right, no, thumbnail? no. I found that we might put some kind of text if it, if it needs it, but mm -hmm. we, we like that scene um, to actually be in the video because when people click on that, they know that that's in there somewhere and so mm -hmm. they want to search the video uh, and find so that. So you don't write shit on the... On the you want it to look like it's really out of the video. Right. And gotcha. sometimes it needs, sometimes we need to explain something or it needs a little something and we'll put text. But most of the time, yeah, it's, it's, it's mostly just, just yeah, a, a yeah. screenshot from the video. Um, but remember we, a lot of times we, we set up the thumbnail, like we, we want to make it good. So it's not just like we film the video and take the best screenshot. Mm. We take purposely, a for it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We, we purposely, yeah. And then, but, um, but to make it look like it was in the video, cause I've been out. Right. Well, no, we, we do actually put it in the video. So basically we'll, uh, it's not like we just film the video and then take the best part. We will purposely like say, okay, let's, let's do something for the thumbnail and then film that <laughs> and then put a, a short little clip of that in, in the, in the video, but Got then it. take a screenshot from, from that oh, part. Wow. Right. And then, so the, th the does th it always, uh, coincide with the story that you're telling or sometimes is it off the wall, totally different. So if it's off the wall, totally different, some people are probably going to get pissed, man. Um, <laughs> so it, it usually coincides with the story, but mm -hmm. A lot of times with like vlogs, right? Most of the vlog, it's like decent content. It's I, right, you, you, you know, the your your hardcore yeah. fans will will dig it, but um, you just you just got to make sure to do something really interesting and, and put it at the end. And then uh, another key is is like have a teaser at the beginning. So before the the video starts, uh, we'll basically put like um, 
the best scene, right? Like three seconds from like the best scene or like part of the best scene. And it keeps people, yeah. you know, wanting to so see show the that first and then get into the right. So, so you intro. show that first and then mm. boom, it's the intro. And then mm. the main video starts. And that's just another way to get people watching t- to the end. That's yeah. an excellent formula for podcasting too. Yeah. If you guys yeah. have mm. the, the editing capabilities is you take the sound bites set of like some of this where we uh, one sentence where we drop something that's like crazy. Yeah. And then you wrap that into a cool little short intro to the podcast and then people will want to stay all the way to the end. So exactly. Like, yeah, like yeah. do you do you ever stage that part? Do you, do you ever think of like something no, crazy to say? Because it, it'd be easier to fake that. <laughs> we know. actually don't. We have a different formula because of like uh, what we do a lot of like answering questions, right? Uh-huh. So, and what Sal does is he previews the previews what this, what's going to happen in the podcast because we have, we've actually gotcha, divided good. our audience. We have a very, we have a, like almost 50% of our people only like to listen to the first 15 to 20 minutes because it's locker room talk. We talk mm-hmm. about that's our, that's our, that's our entertainment. It's yeah. the yeah. entertainment piece. And then the back half is where we get really deep into science where we locker started. Locker room talk. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so about a pussy. So exactly. So we have <laughs> literally episodes where we've talked about <laughs> yeah, the yeah. jazzling yeah. everything, right? We've had this whole episode where we'll do stuff like <laughs> that. That's off the wall. Well, we have this audience now that loves just that piece and that and so we actually mm. kind of tell people what's going on so oh in the first 15 minutes you guys get this banter then we move on to this 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 question so nice we've just kind of segmented our ours like that a little so bit so it's kind of man we should we, like we, we, we will set up we'll think of the preview and we like you so like yeah man having bigger balls helps you lift more weights and then like that'll be like the preview or something <laughs> and then the intro yeah, yeah the we intro. apply this YouTube stuff to the podcast I don't know why we haven't been doing that man yeah well, that's a good it, idea a lot of them are so a lot of the things you're talking about so it's crazy that you actually either self-taught it sounds like or figured this out like we hired a, a company who that's mm. they, who we partner with and sits down and breaks down the algorithm and tells us that we need this much watch time what videos are trending well this and that oh, wow. so, what, do, what company do do? BBTV oh, okay. okay yeah so that was one of the things, fresh plug for them right there. That's uh, what up, B- I, yeah. <laughs> they, uh, TV, what up? But that that's we have someone who we can just contact and call them and ask them what's going on right now and what's oh, nice. trending hot. We get all these analytics and stuff like that. But for someone like you to put that all together is fucking really really smart. I'm and telling clever. you, he's a genius. He's the Michael Jordan. He is because the things that you said a lot of things that I have heard from having this company that it costs us money to have, yeah. and you've actually said things that I've never heard him say before. That's really really smart. It makes a lot of sense. Like. Mm. To do that, I would never think to shoot the thumbnail first. Now, how does that get you onto other videos or get recommended? So, I mean, it's because he's hitting all of them. Mm -hmm. Like the the YouTube algorithm, man. Like the people working for YouTube are like, you know, probably some of the smartest in the world. Like it's very complex. Like who knows exactly what's happening, man? But it's like something sets off the algorithm to say, okay, this person might like this video. Yeah, if you're getting a click-through rate. The, right, it just yeah. it has a lot higher chance of being suggested if, you know, it, it hits these, you know, high high watch time, high audience mm-hmm. retention, high click-through rate. Um, but then, you know, it's not just going to, like, if I'm a, if I'm some girl looking at, like, like fashion, I'm not going to see a Connor Murphy video, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's got to be something, like, they've got to... It's, it's got to oh, be... I think, think it has something to do, too, which uh, you got to know right away when one's taken off, right? Because I can always tell a different video, like, when it's it's probably getting shared like crazy because it takes off really quick. And that if one doesn't take off, it almost never takes off. That's how I feel. Is that true? Or what do you no, think? No, no, not no, at all, not no, at all. Sometimes, oh, wow. so, yo, I've had videos hmm. just straight go viral months later and, like, start get get millions of views you had the same See, experience right it, oh wow it used, to, it used to not be like that the youtube algorithm has improved because youtube is constantly like testing your videos out with like different demographics slightly different demographics slightly different like people who search slightly different keywords and it's seeing what works and all of a sudden if it sees like this group of people yeah. like start clicking through it start watching it they're going to recommend it to more and more and that can pick up months later i've had Man, I've had all sorts of combinations of, yeah. of like views. Like sometimes a video will do shit and then all of a sudden it's good. Sometimes it'll do good and then bad. Sometimes it'll do good, it'll do bad for a while. Oh, it'll pick up again. Like what my oh. most viral videos, it's not like they get all their views and it's some nice little curve. It's like boom, a bunch of views for a day or two or maybe even a week and then back down for a while. And boom, some it shoots back up like all of a sudden a month later. So yeah, man, YouTube. I think YouTube does a good job, but it's complex. I, like it, it, it's always testing out stuff. You know. I got an idea of like, have you guys ever done? You guys do. You guys. You guys do uh, AdWords advertising, or like you know when you do like a when you do a lookalike audience. Mm-hmm. So I think if, if like let's say you got a video and like it's getting like kind of releases it to his his people his people and it's got 
good click through rate, good uh, uh, watch time, you know, and, and retention. Uh, okay, YouTube's like, all right, this is this is success. This is doing well to a certain amount of, to to this kind of person, right? Right. It knows the kind of person who's watching that video. It can figure it out just like if you uploaded a custom audience to to Facebook or or or, or AdWords, right? And you say you want to have a look alike, mm -hmm. so it'll find more people like that. It's similar yeah, to the yeah. algorithm that Instagram has too. If we all look at our explorers right now, if I yeah, checked every one of your explorers, I could I could tell by the people they recommend the type of shit that you like. Yeah, my should right. be all twerk videos. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right, right. It's like it's like the giveaway right away. Yeah, you look yeah, at yeah. someone's explorers like oh, I know I can tell what the fuck you be looking yeah, at. Yeah, it's all the time. same with the YouTube homepage, man. Like, uh, yeah, um, it's funny. My my old video editors, man, they're making fun of me because they. They, they they would upload my videos and they see my homepage and they know exactly like what you know I I'm into at the time like what videos I've I've been watching because of the recommended videos. That's a funny so. thing, man. Like it's like we all see different versions of the internet, man. Mm -hmm. It's like it's almost like we program it to see our own version of reality. If you think about that, it's well, that's of that, spooky. Th it's the scary part. We talk about this on the <laughs> show all the time. You're, you're in an echo chamber. So yeah. Yeah. The, the, the big, yeah, exactly. So that's one of the, the scariest things about what happens to us in the future is that, you know, we just keep getting fed the stuff that we're already liking and you're yeah. gonna, we're going to start to all pigeonhole ourselves and, and put us all in these boxes Why we were trying to do the opposite of it by having something like the internet so we could all spread. Yeah. So now mm. it'll be important as like the younger generation coming up that when you research something and you learn something, that instantly you're also looking for the counter argument to yeah, that too. Exactly. Be otherwise, you could be just getting fed all the same bullshit all the time because it's being marketed to you that way. And it's really easy to get closed when everything you look at is telling you the yeah, same shit. And you're programming Facebook and Google and, and YouTube to show you more of that shit. Yep. You're, like you're literally like, because you watch it, because you like it, you can add like we... we <laughs> it's it's it starts to yeah. actually they've shown it'll start to radicalize your ideas because yeah. you become more and more extreme as you only hear what you want to hear. I live in New York, and um, I, you know our office is mad, and, and you know it's pretty liberal. It's mm -hmm. pretty liberal, and and I just like I was totally like shocked. That Trump won. I, I didn't think. I, I just couldn't. I, it's a like, different bubble. I'm in. I'm in. A, I was in a bubble. So like, I, I act. I actively like did what you did, man. I was like, tell my subscribers, like, yo, listen, can you guys just tell me, like, like why? Like, I wanted to understand, like, what what does it make made you like vote for? Him? And I just wanted their perspectives, like on some real shit, like not not try to hate on them, you know, because you know I'm in New York and I'm black, so obviously I didn't like, you know, <laughs> but it was like it was. I I mean, I, I wanted to. I like I really wanted to understand it, you know, and and I actually got a lot of insight from like talking to them instead of attacking them, you yeah. know, for their ideas. That's like, the I best got a lot thing. Of insight, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the best thing you could ever do. It was, mm -hmm. it was. I learned a lot of stuff that I wasn't aware of. Because I was in a, I was in a bubble, man. You know. Have you always been growth minded, or has there been something that? That's a very, that's a sign of high intelligence for real. Well, the, thank you. <laughs> have, have you always been growth minded, or was that something that set off later in your life? Uh, man, I you know I read a lot. I just I, I started reading a lot when I was like seventeen, and and I just like read a lot, man. I just I just read. What do you gravitate lot. towards more? Uh, business and personal development, uh, okay. almost exclusively. Oh, nice. Yeah, almost ex like exclusively business and personal development. Are you, are you reading anything right now? Yeah. In fact, um, I'm reading a few books right now. I'm reading uh, uh, Discipline by Jocko. Uh, you know, he's a you know, podcast. He got a podcast. Right? Yeah, my mm -hmm. girl's actually reading that book yeah, right now. Yeah, it's good. I, I mean, I'm pretty much think I'm done with it because I don't want to train like him. And the, the end is like just the training. So like the part, the beginning part was all I like mm -hmm. most. Uh, uh, there's a real good book by <laughs> that I'm reading like right now on the train is a uh, called Win Bigly it is by Scott Adams he was the only speaking of Trump he was a, like one of the first people to predict he was going to win but it was based off like his persuasion methods you oh, know yeah. like and like how and then he break he like he's just break breaking down everything he did well he was the like, first like, person to use social media right yeah I mean yo he, I mean trip on that you guys ever think about what our presidents are probably going to look like in the next 10-15 years with the yeah. power of social media I think he's the a YouTube star will probably become the next right? <laughs> I think he's the greatest I'm, I'm, calling, I'm calling the rock within 12 years the rock I think Trump is the greatest marketer. Twelve years, of all twelve time. years, The Rock oh, will yeah. be our president. You'll see. Yeah, and everybody did. thinks that's crazy. Yeah, I, I agree. He did something that was crazy. Come on, man! Like the only uh, only other person with no public service experience to become president was uh, Eisenhower, and he mm. had to kill Hitler to yeah. do it, right? Like you know, <laughs> so Trump did it without killing Hitler, right? And it's like it's like it's just it was this brilliant market. Like the stuff you guys know, marketing, like the stuff he just he hit every pain point. 
you know, he, he definitely used uh, he, a lot of fear, you know, fear, mm-hmm. you know, um, man, he just, he, it was, it was, it was, it was masterful. What he, now, I mean, now, and that's, it, and that's great that you can be objective and step oh, back. Yeah, and look, yeah, for sure. Like, no, I mean, I hope he does a good job, you know, but like, you know, I, if I, if I'm a, if I'm a, at the same time, if I'm a Lexus salesman, right? Like I'm at the Lexus dealer, doesn't mean I know how to build a Lexus, right? You know, mm-hmm. I just, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, but hopefully, I'm I'm wrong about that. I, I mm-hmm. I'd love that for that to be the case. Interesting. Mm-hmm. What are you guys looking? Uh, you guys just started a podcast yeah. like yourselves. What's the goal of the podcast? What are you guys trying? What's to do that with been that? like so far? It's, different. It's different, right? So it's a different medium. What does it yeah, feel totally like? Totally different. Well, for me, so this is what I was thinking, right? From because because Connor Connor's uh, has a huge fan base, right? And um, uh, but in in, in his, his his biggest YouTube channel. He doesn't do a lot of like teaching about mm-hmm. fitness. It's kind of like it's kind of like fitness and pranks, right? It's mm-hmm. fitness pranks and pickup, which which is one reason why I think he's been so successful. Like one, he's smart, but it's also it, we've never seen this before. It's like it's a mix of different right. genres, right? And and yeah, I, I just think it was it was just unique, right? And but he doesn't do a lot of teaching, right? And it's it's hard to sell a pickup. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's hard to sell a um a fitness course or a fitness products if you're not teaching right Mm -hmm. so he on his vlog channel he teaches a lot more yeah that's actually why i started my vlog channel Mm -hmm. is because i (laughs) i want to be able to sell stuff easier Uh, (laughs) but that's not the only reason i also i mean i want to be able to connect with my fans more i want to be able to show them like more of my personality because it it, you don't want to be pigeonholed the comments got me a little bit pissed off man because obviously people have such a wrong idea about me, man. So I wanted yeah. to show a little bit more of my. What are some, what are some of the things? Like I don't really read all your hate. I don't give because I'm not that type of person who gives a shit what yeah. anybody else thinks. I'll make my own. And, like and I didn't yeah. read any of your bad yeah, shit. What, 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 what do people say that like? What's the hate? You it's get? overwhelmingly positive though. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's it, it's weird. I've actually got like less hate the more popular I got. It's oh, like wow. when this and the hate it it, it doesn't get to me. It, it like just I don't give a shit about haters. It's just like people that that could be fans. But they have the wrong idea. Like I, I obviously it, want them you. to be fans, you know. Like, they don't you. Um, but yeah, some of the things. I mean, obviously, they just think I'm some douchebag who uh, takes off a shirt and thinks he's like God's gift to the earth, like, like he, God's gift to women, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and and I don't like. I'm confident, but I, I'm realistic about it. Well, like, you're an introvert, and you would never. You already said it. You would never do that stuff. So that must really women must really that. bother you. That, that's got to be kind of a challenge because you know you're not. You would never do that, but yet you're putting it out there. Do you ever feel like you're an imposter? No, because like, uh, kind of. It's weird. It, it's no, a weird. No, but kind of. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it's a it's a weird feeling because, um, like it's completely different from how I like acted during childhood. Mm. Um, but it's just it's like my personality amplified. Yeah, that's what that's what it's like. It's like mm. my personality that's what amplified, it's like. and I don't know. Sometimes I kind of like the hate because it's such mm. like a, a, um, a motivator. Not only that, but it's like I succeeded. I like over succeeded in my goal to become more outgoing. Now people, I was always called. Oh, I hated this more than anything is when people call me quiet. I hated that. It's like I didn't talk just because I didn't. I didn't know. I them, didn't have man. anything to say, and people call me quiet, and I hated that. And now it's like. Uh, on this YouTube channel, I'm like the complete opposite, and it's, so it's like I hmm. succeeded in my goal hmm. to like amplify and become more outgoing, and so that's that's really cool. It actually kind of feels good, you know. Do you guys ever feel like uh, it's hard to kind of to break away from the social media? I have a, I def, I've never felt like this because I never built a business that was surrounded around social mm-hmm. media until now. And one of the things that I actually have to do, like my girl and I will literally plan out like the next three vacations where we just, and sometimes it's not even a real vacation. It's just like, we're going to take out of, out of town, turn off all the electronics two days. We're just going to be in a hotel room somewhere or whatever. Mm. I have to like put that in there. Otherwise I can get consumed by it. It's so easy because it's in your hand all the time. Yeah. Do you guys ever struggle with that? Uh, Yeah. I mean, so yeah, like like it's not like a a problem, but obviously when you have your phone in your hand, I'm constantly checking Instagram and stuff like that and it's weird because I was like uh I was like anti social media. I didn't like <laughs> like when I was in I didn't get a Facebook until I was like a junior in high school. Like like it was crazy like everyone had a Facebook when they uh or my generation had a Facebook when they were like 13 years old, but I didn't get a Facebook until like junior year in high school and cause I just didn't like it. But now that it's kind of my life, like it's, uh, 
it's how I built my business. Yeah, man, I'm constantly checking it. Um, I used to more. It's weird. I used to read like every comment. I used to check it a lot more often than I do now. I've gotten better at it. Um, yeah, I check YouTube analytics a lot less. I used to yeah, check yeah. like YouTube analytics every hour, but I've actually gotten better at it. I don't know, just because I've, I don't know, since said, I've been doing it for so long, I, I think I was like scared at the beginning that like something was going to happen. All of a sudden I could be like, some, I could be getting all this hate, like all this drama could start, but as it's progressed more and nothing bad has happened, yeah, I've yeah, been yeah. like, it's cool. I can go a couple days or something without checking it. It's all going to be fine when I come back, you know? I check Stripe every hour. I uh, used to, bro. That's yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. I, I, you know, you guys. Yeah. I and, um, I read a book called Irresistible this last year. A uh, great book by Adam Atler, and it, they talk about that the last ten years, we haven't really had we haven't had a lot of like data around uh, what's going to happen to all of us that are so c- consuming this. I mean, just ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you someone called you and normally left a message on like a yeah. recorder and you got back to them. I mean, that was just 10, 15 years ago. It was like that. <laughs> Sounds stunning. Now the average person, okay, picks up their phone 55 to 80 times in a day. Mm. Pick it up off, pick it up, right? So 55 to 80 times. The average person spends two to 2.5 hours a day just surfing social media platforms. And that we know, so that's happening. And we haven't had, it hasn't been happening for long enough to see what this could be causing. And stuff is starting to come out right now. And it's a great book to read. And one of the things they talk about is uh, it could become as addictive and as dangerous for us as like drugs, because we're getting a similar dopamine rush yeah. every time we get a like or a new subscriber or, or money in the bank account. Mm. And we so we keep feeding that and going back to it because it feels fucking good. Why wouldn't we? Just like drugs. The only difference is it's a lot more accepted right now in this time. Because if we if we saw someone sitting there hitting heroin in front of us yeah. like crazy, you would be like, hey, bro, probably calm down a little bit, right? <laughs> you know, man, it's his Just life, man. You know, like, I'm, I'm not going to tell him how to live his life. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, you know what I, I get what you, you know what I do to help with that like I, I try like Sunday is like I keep bo- I, I keep my phone on airplane mode mm. like both bo- I have two phones one is just social media and the other is like the phone where people can like contact me uh-huh. um, uh, and and um, my uh, and I, I wake up I try to wake up early you know I've been on this new shit ever since we're at Jocko man yeah. uh, I'm at 4.30 but I, I always wake up early and I, I I go to sleep with my phone on airplane mode and I don't turn it. I, I, I try not to turn it unless I need an Uber or whatever in the morning. But I, I usually typically leave it on airplane mode until noon. Now, when did you start thinking like that, though? Because I know you're older. You've been yeah, in the game yeah, for yeah. a lot longer. So did there did there come a time where you sort of realized, like, okay, this is maybe affecting my relationships or oh, maybe... yeah. You just noticed it, man. Like, do it would be so, like, you know, man, I know a lot of people had the experience where they wake up and maybe they, they plan on getting after it that day and then they, they check Instagram and they just get lost. The next few hours go th- go mm-hmm. by, or like, or or YouTube, and then just they, wasting they, time. Well, and, and you can't compete with that. Like these are like some of the smartest people in the world who are like programming this, like their jobs to get your attention. You can't compete with that. You can't play that game. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta just know when to fold them in. And so, so it's just, it's just structured for me. If I can get my work done before noon, then it's like you know, and I want to get enough work before noon that even if the rest of the day got ruined, um, I, I I'd be cool. And like even stuff like this, like I like I know people who couldn't not check their phone in this setting for this long. Wow! Oh, yeah. Really? yeah, yeah, yeah. And or you go out to dinner with, and people are like are just on their phones all the and and it's 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 fine. I mean, whatever. I'm not making a judgment, but I, I feel like it, it messes up the quality or, or, or the interaction with the people. Well, you're that with. might Completely. be that might be a very real discussion in yeah. ten more years. Right yeah. now, it's kind of like happening a little bit, and so mm-hmm. people aren't really sure, and so it's kind of like, oh, I'm not hating, am I? Whatever about it, we have to. But no, it's a it's a very real thing, and you're saying, and all of us have experienced somewhat, like you said, mm-hmm. that they were engineered to be addictive, yeah. to the point that the Bill Gates, the Steve Jobs, all these big name guys that created all this great tech wouldn't even let their kids use that shit. Really, trip on that, right? You're the you're the creator of this. Daddy comes home with this new this you new. Won't, you won't let you use an it's iPad. It's gonna be the most revolutionary thing to hit the. But honey, you can't have this. You can't play with it because uh, I know how we've designed it and we engineered it to become addictive. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's kind of messed up when you think about it, man. We, damn, it's like man, if you knew we're it part was, of the problem, if, if, if us, you knew us, it was bad, and, and but you, we're doing you it right care. now. Yeah, we're crazy, doing it right man. now. I know it's bad, and I don't care. I'm still making this podcast. <laughs> it's ruining your brain. <laughs> well, that, so so the the real <laughs> answer to pump. that, you know, and talking to older guys who were before it, 
and now been a part of it, right? And 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 now I've also seen it to where it's like how it could consume our lives. Mm. It's like, man, that one of the things that you know you have to find that balance. You got to find that balance where, because of course it is a job. Of course you have to do it, mm-hmm. but it, you don't also you don't also have to work seven days a week all the time. You could still be more productive and learn how to show you know. And that's what I've done is just create like windows where I yeah, say, yeah, and and for me, I started to notice it affect my relationships. I mean, mm-hmm. I've been with the same woman for over six and a half years. So before this business, she's been with me for other ones that we've built and it, mm-hmm. this is the first one that all of a sudden I have this fucking phone or laptop hey. in front of me 24-7 and she's like hey saying hi to me all the time. and I started to notice it affect our relationship yeah. and so I had to start putting boundaries on myself like okay Adam you need to like shut down at 7 no matter what no matter what if my Instagram's blowing up or Stripe's going off phone goes right upstairs and put away otherwise my relationships start to suffer so those are things I think about now that I didn't think about three yeah. years ago I, try the Sunday thing man yeah, like I, if you can, like, I, I it's been helpful for me. You I'll know, like, it, yeah, Sunday. I think I'll give that one a shot. Yeah. So with the podcast, what's the goal with your podcast? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. we totally missed that. Yeah, well, right. it's like it's all education. Okay. Like it's all like teaching so fitness, and entertainment, self, Fit, okay. fitness and personal development stuff. You know, uh, for Connor's audience. So it's like I like to think of it as his podcast, and I'm like the co-host because it'd be difficult to just <clears throat> talk. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. into a, into a, a microphone, you know, like, and it is fun for me too, and um, you know, like, yeah, you know, like, man, I'm, yeah, that was my, you know, in, in our in this relationship, man, I, I look at myself as like Phil Jackson, you know, like I, I won a championship <laughs> before, you know, when I was a player, and now as a coach, man, I'm gonna help Connor win, you know, even more, you know, he's Jordan, right? So like, I, even in that setting, I'm being Phil Jackson, where he's like still the star, you know, um. And I, and it's really just like to give his audience like to show him. It's initially started to show him that he actually knows about fitness. Right, he actually is a smart dude, and it actually teach them. You know what I'm saying? So like hmm. the like we lure him in with the with the pranks and the crazy stuff, and then once we once we once they once they're on the, the hook, we ring him in with the yeah. It's kind is of it, like, is have you guys form- been approached by um, any other platforms? So you guys are like you know blow it up on YouTube, but like say like a Vimeo or like any other sort of platform kind of come to you guys because because of your audience uh, hmm not really I, I another understand. social media platform i don't i don't think so man nah, facebook youtube and instagram and snapchat, snapchat. I, I don't yeah. use snapchat she that doesn't much, use snapchat but. uh um yeah yeah and podcast podcast is new but man whatever like get on get on every one if, if you can yeah, like whatever you can do yeah un- unless like one there's kind of a reason i don't do snapchat man is because it would just take a lot of time away from the other ones that I'm kind of working at. I mean, at. your Instagram is so, impo- it's so doing so well that I don't right. think, it's, I think it's... And like, it was yeah. different when Snapchat was the only one to do stories. Mm-hmm. What's, but, so. what's your opinion mm-hmm. on, what do you guys think is the best platform yeah. to monetize? What do you think converts the best? Mm, social media platform? Yeah. Mm, so, I would say, so... It's a hard question. It's yeah, a hard question because, it, because it's like... Email. Right. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> you know, so it's like on you talk. on YouTube, I would say is where I like build my closest fans. Mm. But you never know. Like my fans follow me other places. So like from a technical standpoint, they might be buying from other places. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. I actually get the fans and, and build a relationship yeah. with people where they're gonna buy stuff is absolutely YouTube. And, yeah, and now the for po- sure. And, and and now the podcast. But they all probably came from YouTube. Yeah, you for know? sure. For certainly, they right. certainly did. It, I think your YouTube fan is the most valuable fan because they they spend so much time with you. It may, maybe it might be for podcasts too. You know, we mm-hmm. don't have enough experience, but like they, it's that time they spend with you, man. They they feel like they they mm-hmm. know you and they they start to like on the way here in the airport, man. This dude spazzed out when he made. Oh my god, this is the best day ever. You know, like <laughs> you know, I got my say. We we it's like I don't I, I haven't seen people get that from Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. Like or Facebook. And, and, you know, I've I talked to other influencers with huge and. At the same time, we st- only because we advertise on Facebook more. This Facebook, it might be Facebook, but I, I just don't know, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's one of the two. Yeah. I think they're both very powerful uh, platforms. Yeah, yeah. Or- organically for sure. I would I would say organically, YouTube. organically. Because I, I yeah. started out doing organically everything organically, YouTube. and I, I think it's absolutely YouTube. I mean, it's just. It, it, people see you uh, yeah. from from all dimensions. Well, you know? Facebook it, is mine because my Facebook is just so much bigger. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I say, but for you, it's YouTube for sh- like for sure. It's not Brandon, do you? Yeah. Well, I, what I'm curious about because typically there's 
there's kind of a way that you kind of speak to each platform, right? Because yeah, YouTube's yeah, yeah. video, right? Then you, Facebook is kind of more long form. You could write longer posts. Write Instagram's longer. fast, more imagery, right? So mm-hmm. do you do you write stuff or do you do controversial shit? What do you normally do on your Facebook page? On Facebook, man, you know, uh, so man, I found, a, I, re- I was lucky enough to ride a f- few waves, man. So like, I'm always like reading, like, you know, my, my guys know this when I go, every time we go to airport, which is a lot, I buy like almost every technology magazine there is and I'm trying to look for something I can learn and or I'm always on blogs like blogs like tech crutch and all that and it was a few years ago I saw just I saw an article about Facebook um they wanted to compete with YouTube for a uh, video they wanted to win video and they were going to be putting video on um on a uh, higher on you know on, on on people's news feeds so I was like, all right, cool, man. I'm gonna do a video every day, to upload it directly to YouTube. And and at that time, man, it, they they were really doing it. And I caught that wave, man. I just wrote it, and I just I started. Then I was like, all right, man, I'm gonna do a bunch of videos every day on Facebook. And it was kind of cool because Facebook videos, the the bar is not as high as YouTube videos as for quality. Competitions, you know oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The bar is just not as high, and you know, because people are. Mm. I mean, we got. I mean, Casey Nice, that guy. He used to do videos for. <laughs> real commercials for Nike and stuff like you you competing with guys who are pros on YouTube on Facebook is not so much the same man like you know they they expect they they're still seeing dumbass videos from their friend from their from their friends iPhones you know vertical videos and shit and and so you can still like so do you do you actually market and advertise differently now now that you have a company and mm-hmm. you have Facebook ads I'm sure that you run <laughs> and it, do you actually do like downgrade the video on for Facebook and then you're uh, to- nah 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 I, I don't need to right like you know like um I mean I could like there's been times where I'll just I'll, I'll just I'll post a picture a video of me jumping rope right and I, I'll like write something about how you know hit cardio the benefits of hit cardio right and if you want more information on that click here bam and that'll make money you know that could be that could be an ad, I can boost that and that'll make money so it's, it's just different and like they're kind of you see all the, the for YouTube all the all the effort he said he put into those. Mm-hmm. I don't have to do that on Facebook. I, I don't feel like I have to do that on Facebook. But there are things you can do. Like we're, we're experimenting with actually going higher, but still, but still trying to keep. I still I still still think Facebook likes short videos. Mm-hmm. See, yeah, I think they're different. You have to yeah. Facebook is is formatted differently. People yeah. use the the site differently, so you have to format the videos accordingly. Yeah. So. Think of YouTube. Videos are popping up everywhere, right? Uh, just think of how you use YouTube, right? But now Facebook, you're, you're scrolling. scrolling. You're scrolling through. So for someone to watch a video, they have to stop and see something interesting. And, right away. Right. I got a and formula so, for that. Right. And so, and so really? for our Facebook videos, we always have like, a, you, you know, like the text above and below the video with some um, engaging, like big title, right? And that gets people... They see that and yeah. they read it and it makes them stop. And you'll see like all the viral Facebook videos have that. Yeah. You know, they they have the text above and below with like like it's like a title, right? And you need that on Facebook because you need to get people to stop scrolling. It's it's a need, need, it's, need is is a strong word. It's, right. But but you it definitely helps. It, it can help. You can do it without it too. But like this, what he's saying is is definitely good. It's just like need. I don't know if we meant. I guess you you don't need it, but like. I, I can't I don't see a reason to not do yeah, it. Yeah, you probably like, you probably okay. You know what? I, and again, I it's you're probably like, right. You like it, now, it might it might have been different at the start, but now like everyone's doing it. And if you, you if you, if you it. don't if you do have it, it should, people yeah. just aren't going to stop. On on YouTube, everything's like stationary, and, mm. and so the thumbnail will catch their eyes. But on Facebook, like that. everything's moving. Like they're they're scrolling, so it's moving, and uh, you really need that to get their attention. You know what? I, honestly, our mo- some of our most successful ads have had that. You know, like the the like in your ads too. Like um, I did an ad for Connor during his uh on Facebook man during his uh the launch of his first product. And uh, we were getting it was the average card value of the order was like forty dollars, right? Because you know, but uh, it was costing. It was costing. Uh, what was that? What was it four Four, cent? f- forty cents? Forty cents a sale. Wow! To get a sale, man. Um, and so that's incredible margins. Yeah, yeah, it was ten thousand <laughs> percent return. Uh, it was retargeted, right? So keep that in mind, right? You know, it was a warmer audience. Uh, Basically, I was just starting people who hit the sales page and didn't buy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, cause maybe catch them at a different time. But the ad, man, you know, I mean, you want to give me my brand card? Yes, give me, give me three the step ad formula, ten thousand percent return. You guys can thank me later. All right, I want everybody listening to this to shut the fuck up and take notes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
three steps. All right, one, you got to stop the scroll. Like Connor said, it's scroll. You got to do something to stop the scroll. So usually it's motion. What I did with him is I had a drone. I had our drone fly off. Uh, it was, we, I had him on the roof with two girls, uh, Deja and, and, and Bella. And, you know, like, you know, kind of looking like a pimp. And uh, I had, the, I had the, um, the drone fly off to him. And I did it like fast over my hand. So it was like, it was kind of like an epic shot, right? That, that stops the scroll, right? Mm. You know, and then two is, is the content. So whatever it is, sometimes it can be something educational. Sometimes it can be something entertaining. But something that's like, you know, giving some meat, you know, and, and certain different things you do. It's real simple, actually. Then the CTA, right? And it was real quick. Yeah, but you got to have those three things, you know. Uh, and the CTA was, hey, man, you only got, you're almost running out of time to buy the program. So uh, some sort of urgency, you know, mm-hmm. some sort of urgency. And Did that call to action go to that video? Not that that was the video, and no, no, the call to action went to uh, sales page. The sales page. Oh, okay, program. I was gonna say because I was like, how did that make sense? So you just, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get the jump rope for the hit for yeah. that. But. Oh no, 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 no. The, 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 <laughs> the, the whole shit was like, so it was, it was, it was, it was the that was a different video. That was different stuff. His shit was uh, the drone on the roof to the the meat uh, to, to him giving a little bit of content, then a, a call to action, hmm. uh, and that's what we do every time. And we've had some good, like, really good success with with that framework. How how often do you, how much time do you guys spend Sorry. doing that a day? Like is that a big part of it? I'm day? going. I'm like lately, man. I'm going harder with that. You know, like uh, just more. Cause okay, so here's some here's some Facebook ad advice, man. Like this was something we found out recently that the more engagement you have on your page, like the 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 cheaper your ads will be. Like it'll cost you less to get sales or leads or whatever mm-hmm. you're whatever you're optimizing for, uh, whatever your objection, uh, you know, whatever whatever you're going for with your ad, it's going to be cheaper. We've seen him. I, I I had a friend who had a yeah. I just I, I've seen him, man. Like I, I just heard this so many times. Like there was this one um guys with like, like smaller followings, but because their following is so engaged with them, they well get, check it out, man. One dude got one dude. He was managing a a, a, a page. And it was it was good good engagement, right? He was man he was an ads man at managing their ads, and then that page uh, got hacked, right? And but nothing bad happened. They just weren't posting stuff. The engagement went down, and then it went. He went from getting like a dollar a lead to like ten dollars a lead just because it replaced Facebook rewards engagement. Mm. So like even so we we I do all these little ads, but even if sometimes I'll just post them on the feed. I'll post the ads. They might even be ads. I'll just post them, right? Just to get the, the 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 engagement up, we go live. I do live stream every day on Facebook, Facebook Live every day. Sometimes two if I have time, uh, just to get that get that engagement up, man. Oh wow, that's that gonna en- be a great way. That engage, yeah, yeah, because they, they see they see that you're, you're getting, um, yeah, man, they see that you're getting uh, uh, likes and comments, mm-hmm. and and I I, just, I can blatantly ask for the like and, and hey, comment one if you like, you know, like like I, I like I'm basically like pimping the engagement to make the ads cheaper right 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 yeah yeah so we have a lot of fitness professionals that listen to our show who are trying to build their businesses through social media and the digital world which is why we wanted you guys to come on the show um because there's a uh, we've been in fitness for a long time and fitness wasn't like this before but now nowadays even if you just want to be a personal trainer this is a side that you should understand because it can really supplement even your personal training business for sure. Um, and again, that's why we wanted you guys to come on the show. What what are, what are some like easy pieces of advice you can give people just getting started with all of this? Just getting started, I say you find it like what Connor did really well. This is one of the reasons why he's so successful. I think is he he knew his like he, he niched down. He went after you know he knew his market. Like mm-hmm. he wasn't trying to make it to everybody it wasn't for people who wanted to be pro athletes or it wasn't for people who wanted to be like bodybuilders it wasn't for women at all uh it was for it, it was it was 100 percent horny young guys and that like we and we we just went after it 100 percent. like and the, the pain point we hit was got okay man because listen most guys when they're young they start working out because they want girls right mm-hmm. most guys but no one's ever marketed to them that way hmm. right it's all we always just alluded to it hey man you can get in shape and be healthy and like but that and all that is true but that 19 year old kid is not he doesn't care about that hmm. right it's not the, his pain point like from a marketing perspective you're not give you're not hitting that pain point and kind of hit that pain point 100 percent with like the girls going crazy over his body so it was easy to say all right now how do you get the 
this program, when we first came out with it, it was called, we called it the fuckable physique, right? Yeah. It was a pH. <laughs> and we just went right. after that all, yeah. all, like, all, I mean, 100%. I've never seen anyone do that, right? Yeah. Like, how to get the body that girls want. And it was, yeah, we did, it did. You know, the response it, it, was good. It grossed over 200 uh, K in sales in one week. Wow. First week, man, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, it. If you don't count refunds and all that, like yeah, that's mm-hmm. what that's what we did, you know, and and we just hit the we didn't have to the pain point, man. Like you got to give them people what they want, and I don't, everybody who's pussyfooting around this issue, that a lot of most guys are working out for girls, including myself. Like like I I, I was like, oh yeah, you get, let's get shredded and ripped, but 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 why? Like why does the young guy want it? Why does his demographic want it? Like my my demographic wants wants it some different. Like you know I'm, I'm 35, you know like we're we're thinking about you know energy like we're legit energy <laughs> like legit health cholesterol and yeah. shit right like but a, a 19 year old kid is not thinking about that. But he's got you know you know I mean I need another girl like I need a hole in the head right. right. But a 19 year old a 19 year old kid as many as he can get and then kind of showing them out. Smart. Very good. Well, mm-hmm. thanks for coming down, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah man. man. Yeah, it's been fun, man. So we'll we'll see what happens with you guys as you continue to grow. Oh yeah, excellent, yeah. No, excellent. Yeah, thank you for having us, guys. No problem. No hey, problem. Man, hey, hey, where can, Connor? Where can they find out more about it, you? More, man. You can look anywhere on the internet, man. You'll find all sorts of weird stuff. But uh, just I would just type in Connor Murphy, man. Anywhere. When we uh, when we uh, take off from here, we'll we'll do an intro, a full on intro. Okay. For, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And we'll, we'll do all. We'll give you all the plugs. Man. The marketer <laughs> and me just had. <laughs> oh no, we got you. We got you. <laughs> we got you covered. Get all nah, the I love plugs, you guys, dude. We got Thank you guys. So Check it out. Go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. It's our YouTube channel. There's a new video every single day. Also, go to mindpumpmedia.com for 30 days of coaching for free. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.